time I got busted, I was nine. My crime? An impromptu Michael Jackson dance routine that cost me a week of disciplinary probation at my school in Iran. Years later, I got busted again. This time at a party raided by the morality police. My crime? Mingling with boys, dancing. Ironically, to the same Michael Jackson song. Any guesses? You know I'm bad, I'm bad. You see, I grew up in Iran. And after the 1979 revolution, schools became super conservative. The government rewrote history books, and the second taught language became Arabic. Saturdays were for death chants against America, and by the end of the week, we had annihilated Israel with our sweet little prayers. Hijab became compulsory. I remember being dressed like a little black Casper, you know, the friendly ghost, and obsessed with smuggling in Britney Spears and Backstreet Boys posters and we were trapped and not just by the weight of hijab but by this weight of forced expectation to be good little Muslim girls and the rebellion of youth this desire to be seen to be free to just be there was always a quiet revolution brewing within a revolution that was passed down to us by legendary nonconformists before us a revolution that was set to challenge the very foundations of our society, challenging the confines of gender norms and paving the way for a new era of self-expression and freedom, not just in Iran, everywhere. My experience might seem grim, but I was one of the lucky ones. For most people, adulthood in Iran came as a sobering reminder that justice was perpetually unbalanced against their ethnicity, gender, and the God they worshipped. Their aspirations were silenced by gender apartheid. Women couldn't ride a bike, let alone become a judge. Their testimony is worth half of a man. They inherit half of their brothers. And they need male guardian approval to go to work or travel. It is a place where you're considered a Muslim with obligations rather than a human being with rights. It's a place ruled by a regime that the act of this giving this very talk could cost me my life. But in this same nation, in this very same nation, the force of its people has been turned into a weapon of resistance, a beacon of resistance, a revolution we call woman life freedom. And it extends far beyond the borders of this nation, touching whoever it comes in contact with because it exposes the fight for what it really is. Not a fight between men and women, but a fight between power hungry men using women as a token in a competition. The job is only a cover. It's a conflict between civilians and ideologies. God is just an excuse. So what began as a protest against compulsory hijab in woman life freedom soon turned to something greater, a fight against institutionalized oppression of women and systematic violations of human rights and it succeeded, and it persists, and it continues to go on for three simple truths. One, inclusivity. By forging a remarkably inclusive movement, Iranians have not only bridged the divide between men and women, but they have built strong alliances with the LGBTQ plus community, religious and ethnic minorities, drawing in the international community and the Iranian diaspora. Second, progressive engagement by building a progressive and adaptable platform. Iranians have balanced the responsibility of the individual with the collective action. Third, nonviolent civil disobedience at its best because it's both symbolic and strategic, continuing decades long of Iranians' heroic nonviolent resistance. 16th of September, 2022, marks a tragic, yet a pivotal point in the history of Iran. When 22-year-old Mahsa Jina Amini was killed in police custody for allegedly wearing her hijab improperly, her death sent shockwaves throughout Iran and the globe, igniting mass widespread protests. In the days following, 
quickly after, Eloha and Nilufar, who were journalists reporting on it, were arrested and put in prison. Almost immediately after, people went into the streets. Thousands, thousands, over 600 people were killed, 60 of whom were children. After the executions began, thousands more poured into the streets. Ultimately, 15,000 people were rounded up for writing, dancing, singing, speaking, burning their hijabs, and chanting in protests of it. Decades of political and social and economic mismanagement had led to this powder keg moment that was set to change the course of history. And you might think, why? Why is it just a big deal? Well, compulsory hijab is one of the main pillars of the Islamic Republic's power structure. It's the essence of its control and oppression. You might think it's a symbol of religion. It's not. How could it be if everyone, regardless of their faith, is obligated to wear it? So taking it off, waving it, and burning it, as many women did inside Iran, with the help of those who were actually wearing hijab and the support of men, constituted a core attack on the legitimacy of this regime. But the crackdown only solidified society's resolve, and woman life freedom continues and relentlessly continue to move forward for many reasons. First amongst them, it's remarkable inclusivity that forged an unmatched unity amongst people. You see, dictators, they reject change, personal identity, individual autonomy. They emphasize our disagreement, pitting society against itself. But this movement, this movement embraces uniqueness. It harnesses the power of diversity when forming unity. We see pride flags, ethnic symbols. We see people speaking different languages in rallies all over the world. It's a testament to its intersectionality and intergenerational nature. People who had felt disillusioned and disenfranchised are finally coming back to the table, and not just the LGBTQ plus and the ethnic and the religious minorities. It's worldwide, it's drawing in everyone. And what's really cool about it, what's really cool about it, is that a bridge has emerged. And we see counterparts from inside and outside with a sense of agency and collective action, collaborating and solving the very existential problems of the future of Iran, sometimes on WhatsApp threads, hundreds of them. And this is not just a fight for equality. It's a fight for my Baha'i sister who was denied education. It's a fight for thousands of Christian and Jewish Iranians who should be celebrated for being a minority, not discriminated against. It's a fight for my Muslim brother who believes in the freedom of choice, because how can you for fact infer someone's a true believer if they have no choice in choosing otherwise? This is a fight for freedom of expression. This is a fight for a diaspora of refugees who had to choose between freedom and their homeland. This is a fight for all those who shouted Masa Amini's name and now are in prison for it. This is a fight for rappers who should be receiving awards, not jail sentences. This is a fight for teachers who should be able to teach the truth, not disseminate propaganda by force. This is a fight for extremism. This is a fight to build schools in Iran, not destroy them in Ukraine, Syria, Lebanon. This is a fight for our sisters in Afghanistan who are denied everything, everything. So I am here to tell you that this is not just a revolution in Iran. Iranians are not just fighting against a dictatorship. They're rising up against an entire global coalition of autocratic and oppressive regimes. And woman life freedom is an ongoing triumph for the second reason, because it's progressive and adaptable. Digital authoritarianism is a modern day weapon, and quite frankly, one of favorites of oppressive regimes. But Iranians have turned social media into a collective action tool, encouraging citizen journalism and emboldening a nation of ordinary people who in their very protests, detention, 
our rests and resilient spirit are educating the world with one hashtag, two words, Maso Amini, over 300 million times all across social media just so we can hear them. And they've turned each and every one of us into a platform. Iranian millennials and Gen Z, they're not just learning about gender equality, they're teaching others about it. They're forming solidarity with feminist movements all around the world. They're quickly becoming a different kind of influencer, not the kind that sells beauty tricks and travel tips, but the kind that serves as an agent of a movement. Questioning fascism, extremism, and keeping hope alive. If state violence is a disease in Iran, social media has taken a form of its antidote. We're seeing high-level engagement from everyone, discourse at the highest level. People are educating themselves and equipping themselves and finally, finally asking the right question. What does it mean to yearn for democracy? What is my role in it? Woman Life Freedom Hashtag is a full syllabus on civil disobedience. It helps us and the world remember it compels us to reject numbness as a form of healing and remain vigilant against manipulative tactics of regimes who suppress the truth. You see, dictators, they rely on our forgetfulness to maintain control. But hashtag we will not forget and we will not forgive resonates deeply in the collective memory. It's an archive of the stories of our heroes. It's the archive of stories that keep our heroes alive and us responsible, because this is a fight for all those beating hearts who wanted to be more than just a hashtag. And woman life freedom continues to exist until it succeed, because it didn't just begin with Mahsa Jina Amini. It's been 44 years in the making, transcending and marking itself in generations, leaving with its everyday nonviolent resistance an indelible mark in the rich tapestry and history of Iran. We're seeing a formation of a new order. Individual conviction is giving rise to the kind of collective consciousness that is bound, that is bound, determined to go beyond the confines of imposed ideology, growing stronger and younger with each passing day. 60% of our population are below 40. A government disconnected with its youth stands powerless. This is, this is the kind of generation who refuses, who defies the authority of a broken system. 16-year-old Sari now, she questions a government who cannot provide welfare for its people. In her vlog, she, she described freedom as the best feeling in the world, even though she couldn't experience it. She died in the protests. This is a generation who refuses to wear a mandatory hijab, even though the consequences of arrest could change the trajectory of their entire life. They sing songs in alleyways with crowds cheering them on. They write anthems that go on to become viral and win Grammys of song of social change. They shout at rooftops, death the dictator, to remind each other that this is not over. This is a generation equipped with logic who implements the truth with every sacred act of disobedience. And even in the midst of brutal violence, they turn silence into language, into action, which is both symbolically strong and strategically effective. Most importantly, sustainable and conducive to a long-lasting change. So at a time when forms are broken, institutions do not make sense and governments govern with violence. Iranians have modeled in advance what it looks like when we rise to the best of our humanity. They have understood that they're political beings by nature of loving and living. 
And so this is the kind of collective consciousness that is going to go beyond a revolution. This is a renaissance. This is a renaissance that is bound to change the region and the entire world. Finally, womanhood has given life to the most inspiring, inclusive, and progressive revolution of freedom with men at the forefront. We're finally seeing a civilization become what it was always meant to be. The civilization that chartered the first human rights cylinder of Cyrus. This is a country I'm proud to call home. And Iran has figured out what it wants to be. So when they say, is this all your revolution was? For they claim this revolution is dead and done. We declare our revolution has just begun. This revolution is not the ego in you, the self in me. It's the power of us. It's the force of we. The revolution is not measured by the number of the people alone. It's by the souls awakened, hearts that have grown. It's an ideology taking hold in every mind. It's a transformation of society, a new bind, a revolution is a unified stance on the right side of history. Revolution transcends boundaries and differences. And Massa's life, Massa's life ignites the flame that survives.